Hi there! In this video we are going to cover monitoring embedding script. First of all, let's discuss what are the embeddings. So embeddings are a numerical representation of the input data. It can be a numerical representation, for example, of text or of images or videos or music content, whatever it can be. So basically, instead of raw data, we use the numerical vectors in high dimensional space. Those vectors are a compact and numerical representation of our raw data, which can be used by many different algorithms, including machine learning models, to perform some classification, regression, ranking, or etc. very conveniently. So this is why, quite often, instead of raw text data, we use embeddings. And in this case, how we can perform monitoring. Basically, when we have the embeddings, we are quite lucky because it's numerical values, right? It's vectors, actually, in high-dimensional space. So as we have vectors in high-dimensional space, then we actually can calculate quite a lot of distance-based metrics for those vectors. For example, we can calculate Euclidean distance, Cassian distance, MMD, and many, many other distance-based metrics. We can actually perform model-based drift detection and assess the share of drifted components. Let's discuss those strategies in more details. So, embedding drift detection methods. Let me start from distance metrics. Actually, each object which we have in our dataset in the format of embeddings is the numerical vector. Basically, we can calculate the distance between vectors and those distances can be really different. It can be Euclidean distance between vectors or the cosine similarity to assess the angle between vectors. And if we use those metrics, we can detect the difference between our reference and the current data. How exactly? For example, we can find the centroid for our reference vectors, reference data, and centroid for our current data and assess the distance between those two centroids. If you have a huge distance, then probably there are some shifts in those datasets. If the distance is pretty narrow, then probably there are no shifts and data sets are quite similar. The other idea is model-based drift detection. In this case, instead of raw data, we can use the embeddings to build the main classifier, which will try to distinguish between the reference data and the current data. The approach is quite similar, but there are some limitations because we cannot really use the information of strongest features or the best objects to figure out what is the source of drift. So we will have the estimation, what is the like confidence of our models into distinguishing between the reference and current data, so what is model performance in this case, but we won't really be able to somehow treat or somehow understand the source of the differences. However, together with model-based drift, you can use the share of drifted components, because when we deal with embeddings, each component is the numerical value, right? And if we treat each component independently, then we can use drift detection methods, which can be applied for a numerical value. For example, statistical tests, or maybe distance-based metrics, or whatever we used and discussed before for structured data. In this case, we will assess drift size or drift score for each individual component, and then we will need to come up with some aggregative statistics to combine information from all these individual components all together. And the most straightforward things are number of drifted components or share of drifted components. And here I don't really recommend you to try to derive some hypothesis from the individual component drifts, especially if you have very high dimensional space, right? But Razor treats some aggregative statistics because it's much more convenient and makes just makes more sense. So I also want to recommend to you our blog where we compared five different methods to detect drift in embeddings. Especially if you work a lot with embeddings, you might find very interesting the table we created in this blog, where we compared different approaches to detect embeddings drift with different methods like distance-based using Euclidean assigned distances. We also used model-based method, which is classifier to distinguish between reference and current data. We used ratio of drifted components and MMD methods. So we compared it with the different parameters, like using different thresholds, we assessed computational speed, we applied the dimensionality reduction using principal component analysis, and we used different embeddings to encode our raw text data. So we compared those methods between each other 
with respect to different criterion and, well, you can check more details in our blog. So basically, I can say that the main classifier is quite good a strategy because it's comparably fast, right? It's PCA agnostic, it's agnostic to the embedding model. So if you encode your raw text using different embedding models, the results will be more or less similar. It's quite easy to interpret, especially if you use the classification quality metric which you understand and can interpret well, and it's quite familiar method. But if, for example, you want to choose something faster, you can go to distance-based metrics like Euclidean or Cassine, or maybe if you want to have some specific features or properties of drift detection method for your embeddings, just check out our blog, take a close look to this table, and select something which is the most relevant to you. So far, we discussed different strategies to build a monitoring for unstructured data, specifically text. So we discussed tracking the properties of raw text data with help of domain classifier or topic modeling. We discussed the descriptor-based approach, and we discussed monitoring based on the embeddings. Let's now have a practice and try to apply all those strategies to the real data and derive the real metrics.